wow, that works, that works better. Um, and, uh, and we've been helping out with Advertising Week for the last five years, and it's really been an honor and privilege. And, uh, and today, we're fortunate enough to be able to welcome Dennis Crowley, co-founder and CEO of Foursquare, and Tristan Walker, Director of Business Development. And in front of us here, we have, a, uh, we have just a, a great audience of advertisers and, and agency folks. And what Foursquare really brings to the table that, that's new and different from really anything that we've seen before is the ability to really intimately get to know their end user and really be able to interact with these users on a really an everyday, on location kind of basis. And now, most of you probably have heard of Foursquare, and um, what we're really excited about is the opportunity for Dennis and Tristan to talk about Foursquare, but also really how you folks, from a creative standpoint, can really integrate it and into, into campaigns and really kind of make it a success for you. What Dennis is going to talk a little bit about is Foursquare, for those of you who may or may not know, last week annou uh, announced and released their 2.0 version. So Dennis is going to talk a little bit about the history of it, he's going to talk about some of the key features behind it, and uh, touch a little bit on where Foursquare is going in the future. Tristan's going to talk a little bit about Foursquare 2.0 also, but from the perspective of how brands and businesses really use it, and also he's going to give a couple examples and things from different case studies. And what we're also what we're also really excited about is uh, is talking about and really informing you folks about how Foursquare has really become much more self-service over the last six months, and that's really continuing to grow. An example of a self-service where you don't even need to really use the, the Foursquare um, in-house team on a regular basis is um, we Media Tavern are working with Advertising Week and with EA on an event later this week where there's going to be a special that you folks would be able to unlock. If you're one of the first 20 people to show up at the EA Play to Win session, you would be able to unlock this special and the first 20 people get a, a EA video game and a t-shirt. So from that point of view, it's really, really great from an incentivization process. So kind of with, with that said, um, we're excited about kind of the, the creative opportunities and listen to what Dennis and Tristan have to say. And finally, we're going to be at some point putting up, I don't, oh, it is up there now, the, uh, the five digit uh, short code there where you'll be able to at any point text the, uh, a question or comment and um, through the help of a, of a moderator in the booth behind us, we'll be able to uh, answer those questions and things for you. So without further ado, take it away, Dennis. Hey, what, what game do you win? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know. You know? <laughs> Hi, my name is uh, Dennis Crowley. I am one of the co-founders and the CEO of Foursquare. And thank you guys for uh, for joining today. Can I ask, um, are any of you guys on Foursquare? Yeah. All right, that's awesome. Like a year ago, we'd ask these a year ago we'd ask these questions, and you'd be like, "Does anyone even know what Foursquare is?" And you get like three hands going up. And then you'd have to show 20 slides and kind of walk people through the product. So it makes my job much easier that everyone kind of knows what Foursquare is, which is great. And that you guys are checking. Did everyone check in here? Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for all the continued support. Um, so let me, I have like five minutes. Let me click through some of the stuff. Um, you know, this is easy because you guys already know what Foursquare does. You know, we, we're building products for mobile phones. That are, uh, you know, we're aiming to make the world a little bit more interesting to explore. And so people go and they check into different places. Um, you know, you get to learn where your friends are, you can uncover tips about, uh, you know, things that are going on nearby. Um, you know, and I think one of the things that we're really kind of well known for is this layer of game mechanics that we've, that we've kind of applied to the real world. So, a lot of stuff that we were thinking about when we started Foursquare was like, how do you turn life into a game? And how do you turn the city into almost like a game board? And so that's where a lot of the ideas for the points and the badges and, um, you know, some of the mayorship stuff came for. It's like, how do we make checking in playful? And how do you take these utilities that kind of blend together social interactions and um, you know, social inter interactions and uh, you know, mobile phones and location-based software, and really kind of add a lot of value to uh, to people's everyday existence. So, you know, we're building things for uh, for iPhone. We've got an Android app, BlackBerry app. Actually, we just launched a um, uh, Nokia version as well, which is, should be out. Um, the big thing that we're doing for Foursquare 2.0, and does everyone have 2.0? Do you guys play with it? Yeah. So we're going to be rolling out features kind of you know over the next uh, really for the rest of the year. Um, but one of the big differences we broke out like the tips and to-do list, right? Before all these things were kind of combined together. You guys probably know if you check in at restaurants, you get tips about what you should order, like should you chat with the bartender, what's around the corner, is there some cool art you should see? Um, and now what we're trying to do is to kind of break out this to-do list. We want people to start collecting experiences that they want to go out and have. So if Foursquare was good before, kind of pushing you to go to new and interesting places because you were chasing badges and whatnot. You know, the to-do list is all about collecting these curated experiences from other people and from brands and from media folks. 
um, so you can carry around the, carry them with you in your pocket, and hopefully, um, you know, start exploring the world in different ways. Um, one of the things that we've, oops, some more water. One of the things that you know we've started to do is we've created this add to four score button. And you can see it in a couple places. This screenshot in the bottom is um, it's really where we've embedded it on our site. So you can you know you can put that get a little bit of embed code. When you embed it, what you embed is that thing you see in the upper left in the orange box. And there are these you know these add to four score buttons. And we've started to do partnerships with a lot of blogs, a lot of media companies. Um, I think there was like ten that we launched with. Um, you know everyone from like oh this is the list of the ten best burgers to have in Chicago to, you know, that's a screenshot from, you guys know Curbed.com, like the real estate blog, they have Curbed, Racked, and Heater. So whenever they talk about restaurants, or whenever they talk about like sample sales and new shops that are opening up, there's an active Foursquare button. And so if it's something that interests you, you can just click that button, and it drops it right in your Foursquare. Um, so, you know, the next time that you're out, like if you're checking out, you know, checking into places, or if you're checking for nearby tips, you can also review that to-do list. It's like, oh, these are all the interesting things that I wanted to do nearby. Um, so that's kind of the direction that we're going. Like a lot of people associate what we're doing with like, oh, you guys like a game based on check-ins. And that's, you know, that's part of the story. But really, the, the reason that we started the company was to make these products that make, you know, make the city, make the world, make your neighborhood a little bit easier to explore. And this is like our first push of put in, really, in that direction. So it'd be interesting to see how this stuff plays out. And, oh, that's it. That's all I got. So, yeah, now you're up, Tristan. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to shed some light on you know how Foursquare, you know how we work with brands and businesses. Quick show of hands: How many folks have actually reached out to us on behalf of their clients? Or the... oh, so, okay, good enough. Um, so, I just wanted to distill how we think about brands and merchants and retailers on Foursquare. Um, you know how we like to think of it. We, we effectively think of brand engagement on Foursquare in, in three tiers. So, at the bottom tier, we have local merchants or sole proprietors. Um, so Joe's Coffee Shop, Mary's Flower Shop. Um, and in speaking to these folks, we have tens of thousands of, of merchants on the platform right now. And when you speak to them, you know, every single time you hear, there are only really two things that they care about. All that they care about is driving retention and acquisition. Right? How can I inspire people to come to my venue a little bit more, loyal customers, and how can I get new customers to this venue? So all that Foursquare hopes to do is help them in those two regards. Right? So, you know, we can tell them a little bit more about their loyal customers by telling them who checks in, when, with whom, how often, eventually where they go before, where they go after, and equip them with tools to acquire new customers, right? So we have these things called geotag specials, um, whereby if you're a merchant, you can run a special on our platform, in this case, Destination Bar, um, and encourage new, you know, folks to visit your venue a bit more. Um, so just a few examples of that. Um, this is Monique's Chocolate Shop. Um, near and dear to my heart, I'm actually based in Palo Alto, California. Monique's Chocolate Shop is a new chocolate shop that opened about eight to nine weeks ago. Um, my wife actually teaches the daughter of this owner, her name's Monique, and she walked in when they were building the, the menu and she said, hey, you should try this Foursquare thing. My husband you know, does business development for the company, you should test it out and see what you think. Uh, so Mark, the owner, said, you know what, why not, I'll give it a shot. It's free, why not? Um, he also decided, to run a similar promotion in the local newspaper where he paid an ad for, for about $300 a month. Uh, and the special he decided to run is to show that you've checked in, buy one truffle and get one free. Simple enough, ran the exact same thing in the newspaper. Over the course of seven weeks, I just spoke with him last week actually, the guy's acquired 60 new customers. He's seen well over 150 redemptions of this special. And when you compare it to the newspaper ad that he bought, he's only seen one redemption. So when you think of like, this, all the stuff from an ROI perspective tends to you know, be put into perspective. One of our favorites, um, this is Joe. Uh, Joe owns a local diet bar in Milwaukee called AJ Bombers. Um, and you know, the special thing about Joe, he's totally co-opted the platform for his own. So I remember he came in on one Friday, shot me an email, I said, Tristan, how can I get people to unlock the Swarm badge on Foursquare? All right, so it's that little thing with the bees in it. Uh, and I wrote back to him and I said, Joe, all you have to do is get 50 people to your venue over the course of three hours and people will unlock this one match. He said, all right, thank you. I'll get back in contact with you on Monday. Come Monday, I get an email from Joe. He says, Tristan, I want to thank you so much, so much. I decided to run a swarm badge party on Foursquare. Right? I said, Joe, that doesn't even make any sense. Like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> and he said, you know, Tristan, uh, swarm badge is one of our first, um, when we first launched it, it was early in the year. And he said, very few people in Milwaukee had this swarm badge. So I wanted to inspire people to unlock this thing at my venue. He said over the course of, I think it was 17 minutes, he saw 160 people checking at his venue. So if you look at that spike in the chart, 
That was his swarm badge party, right? So again, how can you inspire continued loyalty and potentially like new customers with some of the game mechanics that we have in Demi to the Cloud? Right? And then now it's up to us to build tools to make this, you know, blow this out of proportion and really, really inspire that retention and acquisition. So Joe is a unique case, and we see all the time a lot of merchants really co-opting the platform for their own, right? Um, lawyer in Miami giving free consultation if you're checking at the five big jails in town, right? Um, cemetery giving free tours after your 100 check-in. And we say, like, why not, right? Like, let's, let's give these merchants the tools to do whatever they want and play with it, right? We don't want to get in front of that at all, right? But let's just, you know, have fun with it, right? Um, and we see some really interesting ones, right? Like a car service that offers free rides uh, for the mayors of JFK and LaGuardia. It's free. And when you think about it as a mayor, how great would it be to call my local taxi driver and say, you owe me a ride today, right? And that person's just gonna tell all of his friends and there's a ton of referrals and it's, you know, everybody's happy, right? But again, it goes back to these two things, retention and acquisition. And all that we wanna do is provide them with tools to enhance building. So that was the first tier. Now this is the second tier and this is kind of near and dear to my heart and where I really start to get excited. This is retail. And we speak to retailers, you know, folks like Starbucks, uh, The Gap, among others. When you speak to retailers, they care about the same things, retention and acquisition, right? But now they're saying, how can Foursquare become our new digital loyalty card of choice? So this is Tasty Delight. Is anyone familiar with Tasty Delight? Yogurt chain out here? Cool. Um, they did something super, super, super interesting. They leveraged our API to sync Foursquare check-ins to loyalty card swipes at the point of sale. So you go to mytasty.com, you log into their loyalty program, you connect your Foursquare account to that program in a Facebook Connect kind of way. We have you know, the equivalent Foursquare Connect. And that's it. Now when you go to Tasty Delight and swipe your card, it'll check you in on Foursquare, it'll send an automatic tweet or Facebook status update saying I just earned an additional nine points on my Tasty Delight treat card. I get excited about this because it really does three <coughs> things for the brand in a really unique way. First, it takes the employee completely out of the equation. Um, you know, a lot of folks have always talked about, you know, this holy grail of getting a coupon in front of a retailer, taking it and showing the cash register and redeeming the coupon. It's really a holy grail that really doesn't exist, right? Um, when you think about training your employees and the cost that takes, it's, it's really a significant undertaking for a lot of these retailers. So, complete, it takes the employee completely out of the equation. Secondly, it's a free marketing impression for the brand's loyalty program, right? So, by sending this automatic tweet, Facebook status update, Foursquare check-in, you're inspiring continued loyalty in your program. And you know, when I saw this, I really started to think about the business in a completely different way. You know, one thing that I think I'm, I'm truly motivated by, you have folks like Facebook and Twitter <coughs> that have found really interesting ways to socialize the internet. And I think we're in a unique position to socialize loyalty and rewards in ways that have never been done before. And this is just the beginning of what, what we can do here. So that's the second thing. The last thing, and this is where I get really, really excited, is the opportunity now for folks like Tasty Delight to do things like looping purchase habits with lifestyle preferences. Right? So you can imagine an opportunity where Tasty Delight maybe knows that you like a certain type of yogurt, they've noticed that you've unlocked a gym rat badge on Foursquare, so because of it, you know, they might say, you've unlocked a gym rat badge, here's a reward for it by getting a discount on our new non-fat free yogurt or whatever that is. Um, or I can imagine a world where I go into my local grocery retailer, they've noticed that you know, I tend to frequent yogurt shops all the time, I might get a discount for Dan and Yogurt uh, at the point of sale. Um, so this is something that I think we truly, truly kind of encourage retailers to think about um, because it's truly powerful. And if you look at the loyalty card adoption rate that Tasty Delight has seen since implementing Foursquare functionality into the program, it's a hockey stick chart. Right, so again, how can we inspire that loyalty? This is a really, really unique way to do so. Uh, we've had the good fortune to work with folks like Starbucks, Gap, Tasty Light, and I always talk about, again, again, that holy grail. And people always use this example as the holy grail, right? Walk in front of Starbucks, get a coupon for the barista, and we had the good fortune to actually do it, only to show it's really not the holy grail. But it was a really good opportunity for us to test this out, right? So Starbucks, really get social, came to us and said, you know, Tristan, we want to reward our loyal customers particularly the mayors of our venue. So you become the mayor if you're checking out of Starbucks more than anyone else over the course of 60 days. Um, so at the end, they have this Frappuccino promotion that they do every summer, and at the end of that promotion, they said, We're, we want to continue this for Foursquare users. So they said, simple enough, if you're the Foursquare mayor of our venue, 
check in, show us, and get a dollar off any size frappuccino. Right? Starbucks had already been the most checked in retailer on the platform, even just last week. I think they crossed like two and a half million check ins. It's pretty surreal. Over the course of this campaign, as already the most checked in retailer on the platform, they saw a 50% increase in Foursquare specific traffic to their venues, right? which is significant, particularly when you consider not only there being the most checked in retailer, but also you know, it's just a discount for Frappuccinos. Right? And the, the thing that I think we care most about that we do uniquely different from a lot of other folks just in the space is that we can provide tools for brands to lead their consumers to do stuff. And once you're leading consumers to do stuff, there's so much value exchange to be had by the brands, hopefully one day us, right? And this is the stuff that I, I think marketers dream for, right? Drove past five big sporting goods stores to hit up Sports Authority because of the Foursquare special, right? Trying Frappuccinos even though I've never tried it before, right? Uh, Jonathan, he's uh, one of my colleagues, saved some money up Steve Madden, and he had no intention of doing so, right? So again, when you start to think of leveraging our platform to lead your consumers to do things as opposed to just suggest is really a fantastic opportunity that we really want to encourage folks to play on. So that's the second tier. And lastly, brands. Um, so you know, we've had the good fortune to work with folks from Bravo, to Gap, Pepsi, among others. And the way we view brand engagement on Foursquare is that it's all about guiding experiences, right? Again, leading consumers to do really interesting things in their city. Bravo came to us last October. It was kind of a match made in heaven. Like, I'm a super Bravo fan. Uh, you know, they're Foursquare users. We emailed each other on the same day. It was kind of like a meant to be kind of thing. Or at least I like to think of it that way. So they came to us and said, we want to engage with viewers of our five shows, right? Like Millionaire Matchmaker, Sheer Genius, Real Housewives, Launch My Line, and Top Chef. They realized that they only really engage with their consumers over the hour that those people are watching those shows, but there are 23 hours of the day that they want to be in constant contact with those consumers. Right? So they said, Bravo, you already have a really rich repository of content that comes from celebrities of those shows. Let's layer that into the Foursquare platform. So now if you're following Bravo on Foursquare, I might unlock tips from Top Chefs, saying go to this restaurant and try the steak sandwich. Right? Or from Real Housewives saying, go to this wine bar, get this drink that's not even on the menu, and ask for this bartender when you get there. Right? So a unique way to not only build an affinity with the brand, the Bravo brand, but also celebrities of that show. Right? How can you create these touch points of affinity-based marketing that are really unique? And if you do a set number of things that's recommended by the brand, you'll unlock what we call digital candy within our app. Right? So these badges. If you check in at three Bravo recommended places <coughs> or Real Housewives recommended places, you'll unlock the Real Housewives badge on Foursquare. Um, and one thing that we try and promote for brands is have those experiences that are unlocked within our app tied to experiences that live outside of in the real world. So Bravo said, hey, we're going to take our Real Housewives badge, work with a, a great partner of ours, Sephora, and we're going to encourage Real Housewives users to go to Sephora and get a special for it. So they said, if you're a Real Housewives badge holder and you go to this Sephora in New York tomorrow, you'll get a $100 gift certificate if you're the first person there. Right? So again, thinking about like leading consumers to do stuff. So there's one woman who won and she shared that she won on Twitter and I always reach out to folks to see how the redemption experience was. Right? So I reached out to her and said, how was it? How was it awesome? And she said, yeah, you know, it was great, but it was even better watching the nine other people run into the store trying to redeem the promotion. Right? When you think about that, that's, that's an opportunity for Sephora to upsell those customers on whatever they have in store. You can imagine a scenario where Sephora might even say, if you want to know if you've gotten a $100 gift certificate, you've got to spend $10 with us. Right? And very simply, they could subsidize the cost of that promotion. Right? So these are the ways that we try and kind of encourage brands <coughs> to think about this stuff. Um, and lastly, this is the last thing that I'll kind of finish with. Um, this is probably my favorite campaign, not unique to Foursquare, but just in all of social media in general. Have any, has anyone heard about what Jimmy Choo did? So it was interesting. Um, you know, the reason why this is my favorite is because we had nothing to do with it, like at all. I woke up one morning, right on Mashable, Jimmy Choo partners with Foursquare, right? And I kind of handled his development, so that didn't happen uh, until I read the article. I said, great partnership, right? Um, <laughs> and what they decided to do, they came out with a new sneaker line. Um, so, and they gave that sneaker a personality. So sneaker line in London, gave it a personality, gave it a Twitter handle, gave it a Foursquare account. And, it, and that shoe would check in all around London. So it would check in saying, I'm eating a croissant at this cafe. Right? Or I'm taking a look at this Picasso at this gallery. And they would tell their followers, if you're following the shoe, and you got to that venue in enough time to catch a chew, right, you'll get a free pair of sneakers in your size. Right? 
So the shoe would stay there for two minutes, go to the next place. They had people around London running for three weeks <laughs> trying to catch this shoe, so much so that folks would run into people with Jimmy Choo bags, right, who had nothing to do with the campaign, right? But when it when it really when you think about this and really distill it right like it really goes back to, to leading people to do stuff. This is the epitome of like leading your consumer to do the things that you want, right? And the key takeaway here, they gave us some stats um, around the campaign, which kind of blew my mind. One in seventeen London users were chasing the shoe, right? Um, and then they also did a sales comparison in the four weeks before they ran the campaign and the four weeks after, and they saw a thirty percent increase in sales. And we had nothing to do with it. So the one thing that I guess I want to drive home here is to really start to think of Foursquare as a platform. Like a lot of folks come and immediately want to do a badge with us, and you know that might not always be the best opportunity. But if you just think of it as opening an account, just starting and playing, and then seeing how your consumers want you to leverage the platform, it'll certainly serve you guys in good stead. That's all I've got. Cool. So I think at this point, um, can we get that, that five-digit short code back up here? Awesome, thank you. Oh, it looks like there's already some questions. Um, all right, we'll, we'll start up at the top. I'll just read them off, and you folks can just decide who wants to answer. But Foursquare is leading the way in location-based services. Can you tell us about how it all began, the ins and outs of a location-based model? Of the ad model, or of the, oh, that's going to out whoever asked the question. Um, yeah, I, I mean, as a as a product, like we never we didn't really start the company to, to start a business. It was more like we we wanted to build these things that would explore what would happen if we try to turn the real world into a game. And so, you know, with me and Naveen, my co-founder, working together, it you know it became a little bit about a check-in service and a little bit about you know collecting tips and sharing experiences, and then a little bit about unlocking badges and whatnot. Um, the stuff that that we, we that we ended up doing with um, with specials and a lot of the stuff with brands. Uh, it wasn't us that invented it, it was the local merchants that invented it. So it was about, actually a, about exactly a year ago that you know, someone forwarded us a photo of a flyer that was hanging up in San Francisco. Um, was it the Marsh Cafe or something? Yeah. yeah. And you know, the flyer was, you know, check in on Foursquare and we'll give you a, a dollar off your, your, you know, a dollar off a, a ticket to the next show. Or I can't remember specifically what the promotion was. Um, and then you know one of the r reporters from Mashable or TechCrunch wrote us and like, oh, did you, it, like, how did you guys cut this deal? And I'm like, we didn't do that. Like, they're just hanging flyers up. We don't know what they're doing. And you know, we started seeing more of that stuff at, as it started getting a little bit of press and as people started hearing about Foursquare. Um, you know, we started seeing more of that stuff happening online. And so we specifically went out of our way to build a product that could um, really capture all that opportunity for more commercials. And then once we started working with Tristan, Tristan came in with like, we're really going to do a lot of stuff with brands. And so we you know started reaching out proactively to. Well, we're not practically, but a lot of people started contacting us. We didn't really want, we didn't really know specifically what to do with a lot of these, um, you know, media folks or, or or brands. And so Tristan's been been helping define uh, a lot of that for us. Yeah, I think the only thing to add there is, you know, we didn't know about it, and I don't think anybody had any idea around how to really engage in the space. So we said, you know, let's just try a bunch of stuff and see what sticks on the wall. Um, and that really allows us to really innovate and really push the boundaries of this thing. Right? I, I think a lot of folks think of just ads in general on kind of this impression-based thing. Right? Uh, and then when you really talk to folks, you know, that's not what they want. At the end of the day, they just want people to buy stuff. Right? So we can totally simplify our product around that particular goal. Um, could one of you describe the, uh, the social game aspect of Foursquare and the real significance this holds for users and merchants? Um, so yeah, the, the social gaming stuff is, um, you know, it's, it started again, it started as like an experiment, right? So Naveen and I just wanted to, you know, really wanted to build something that would encourage you to do the things that you normally wouldn't do. So I mean, I live in the East Village and, uh, you know, there's, I typically have these nights where, you know, I'm too lazy or too stuck in a routine to go any more than like five blocks away from my apartment. I'm sure a lot of people kind of empathize with that a little bit, but I've had a similar experience. And so our thinking was, what if we made like a leaderboard that allowed you to compare with your friends to see who was having the most fun this week? And there was some way to capture the most fun by using check-ins, using some of this stuff. And so you know, that leaderboard for a Saturday night was kind of the, one of the, um, you know, like the big, the big like, you know, questions that we had. Can we build something that, that does that? 
And then the badges started coming around. It's like, well, what if we started offering people rewards specifically for doing things that they normally, you know, that are kind of hard to do? Like, go track down 20 different pizza places and you get a pizza badge. Go to the gym 10 times in a month. And what we started seeing is that people wanted to collect these badges and they would go out of their way to do it. And so we find ourselves in this really interesting spot where you know, we can kind of create these game elements and people will, will change their behavior in the real world in order to get them. So we think, well, we, you know, we could use that to drive people to, to shops as we're, we're starting to do with some of the specials. But then you know, I think what's more like, personally interesting is like, can you get people to, you know, to make their lives like, more interesting and more diverse? Like, can we get people to see all of the Oscar movies before the Oscars you know, premiere? Like, can we get people to, to go to the gym more often? Can we get people to volunteer more often? Can we get people to go to art galleries more often than they would? And you know, that's a lot of this is just like us experimenting with like, okay, how do you take social media and all the interesting things from it and push it out into the real world and see how it impacts people's lives? Just a quick question: How many folks have like redeemed a mobile coupon that wasn't Foursquare? So a lot of the hands stayed up. The reason I, I say that is because I mean, mobile coupons by themselves are really boring. Right? It's, it's not very interesting. And Dennis would always talk about how it's all about what you can do on top of the check-in, right? To encourage people to actually share their location. I kind of take that analogy and take it on the merchant side, right? It's, you know, there'll be a swath of, you know, just tons of ad products. Just, you know, come to my happy hour and give us a high five because our venue's cool, but it's not very interesting, right? So the way I try and think of it is, you know, what can we do on top of those generic ad products? So some of the examples like the Swarm Badge Party that I told you about, driving 160 people to your venue just to unlock a 300 by 300 jank bag. Right? Or these mayorships, the same guy has seen a 30% increase in many item purchases as a result of that gaming dynamic. Right? Um, so the, the one thing that we hope to do, and I think the same thing that I said for brands about leading consumers to do stuff, I think we can apply a lot of the same things for merchants. Right? Um, just with generic ads by themselves, you really can't lead anyone to do things. That's what you're just suggesting. So, you know, we're going to do everything that we can to, you know, speak to these merchants, figure out, you know, what game di dynamics make the most sense for them, and try and leverage that to the max ability that we can. Uh, Foursquare is still largely comprised of early adopters. How are you folks uh, working to gain exposure and help grow the technology? Uh, yeah, it's <clears throat> it's interesting. Like when we were, I, I kind of disagree with that. We're at three and a half million users. Um, and it's at the point where, it, it's weird, like three and a half million users is, is still a relatively small user base compared to like larger social networks like Twitter and Facebook. Um, but you think about like the number of people that know what Foursquare is. Um, and you know, I, my mom who like goes bowling every Thursday has people at the bowling alley that come up and they're like, oh, I'm hearing all about your son, this Foursquare thing. <laughs> and so even though they may not know what it is, like the seed is there to kind of grow this thing into, into something much larger. And so you know, the people that are checking in um, on a regular basis, like you could call them early adopters, but it's kind of the same thing with Twitter. It's like, oh, no one's going to use that thing, and that was that's what people were saying two years ago. And look at you know a year ago we were at I don't know a few thousand users, and now yeah, and like almost a year later it's like three and a half million. So um, like I think the next time we sit on this stage, like the early adopter stigma will be kind of kind of gone. So how are like what are we doing to kind of grow out of that like early adopter ghetto? Like that's one of the hardest things I think for a for a tech service to, to do, it's like to get a, to get into the mainstream. And we've been really kind of fortunate and, and lucky um, to partner with such like amazing brands. Like if, when we partnered with Bravo, they put you know 15, 20 second spots on TV for us. We did deals with MTV and VH1. We got the same type of treatment. And um, you know that might not drive people to become users, but it's kind of introducing the idea of what Foursquare is into into like the, the general like social conscious. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just it's been working out pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> um, outside of badges and partnerships, where do you see the uh, future of monetizing location-based social networking? Outside the what? Location, location-based. So are we going to make money? Is that the question? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so it's outside of badges and partnerships. Oh, yeah. So I mean, the crux of our business is, or what we think to be the crux of our business, will be kind of local merchants and retail. Right, right now, we have very generic you know, run a frequency-based special or run a mayor special. Um, and we really haven't done much uh, for merchants over the past, you know, six or so months, and that's gonna change in, in the near future. Um, you can imagine a world where, you know, I showed the merchant dashboard that we had where we have, you know, pretty baseline analytics, like who your top customers are, um, what the male-female ratio is, but you can imagine more robust analytics, right? Like, where do people go before they visit your venue and where do they go after, right? And you think about cross-promotional opportunities there for the merchant. 
Um, or even, you know, and this is like total pie in the sky, but if you could think about, you know, on rainy days, your check-ins correlate in this way, like here's a suggested special for you to run based on past activity and performance that you've seen, right? So robust analytics is certainly a fantastic opportunity that we think we can leverage. Um, another opportunity, you think about these specials, right now they're geotagged, so anyone within like 200 meters will be able to see this special. But you can imagine almost a Google AdWords-like model, you know, based on latitude, longitude, time of the day, day of the week, et cetera, to feature um, specials. And if, you know, we can dumb that down to the, you know, simplest way possible for merchants to leverage, we think that that's a monetization opportunity as well. Um, but, you know, the way we think about this stuff is, yes, it's pie in the sky for us. We'll never charge people for things that they don't want, right? So we're just taking the next couple of months to figure out what they want and potentially charge them for it. You guys ever use Google Analytics for websites you have? Anyone? Yeah, like we're basically building Google Analytics for local merchants. And you know, you show this stuff to bars and restaurants in our neighborhood, and like, you know, the, the shop owners, like their minds are blown. Like they've never seen stats like this for their business. And it's like all you gotta do is encourage them to check in and you get the stats. So we got people that are hanging flyers up, we got people that are hanging these little clings in their window. Like you've seen those things like visit us on Yelp, like you're gonna start seeing a whole bunch of these like check in on Foursquare. And like, as I'm walking through you know, downtown, I'm starting to see a lot more of those because there's a reason for local merchants to encourage people to check in and use, use the product because they get the stats on it. They get the stats on it, they can start building interesting promotions, they can start targeting their customers in different ways. And it's, um, you know, as excited as we are about building some of this stuff, like these guys, like their minds are blown by it. It's really, it's exciting to see. Yeah, and we're, we're totally surprised. Like Joe, our super merchant with the Swarm Badge party, and he's just insane. But like, the one thing that was really interesting about a week ago, he wrote a blog post and he said, Tristan, I've been running this mayor special. I've seen immense success from it. Um, but, you know, it's just not enough. Like, I, I wanted to reward uh, just regulars that come to my venue. So he leveraged our dashboard to figure out who the next three in line were. And those next three in line can create their own menu for themselves every time that they come in, right? And also for their friends, too. And no one else can touch this special super mayor menu board, right? Um, but he found use in it and value. Right? Is that something we can charge for? I don't know, right? Um, but I think we're gonna explore this and see if we can. Cool, um, and I actually really like the next question, but um, what are you folks doing to, uh, to really create a balance between the, the wants of users and really the, the demands of marketers? An example being, um, I think probably, probably 10 different people I know have asked me, what do I have to do to unlock the douchebag badge? So everybody wants that. But with the whole, with the whole, idea, behind, with the whole idea behind it of what how do you, because you kind of touched on the idea that, that badges aren't always necessarily the best thing to have in mind from a, for a marketer. So how do you kind of work on the balance of what the users want versus the marketing demands? I think users always come first. Right? Uh, if we don't have any users, it really wouldn't matter what the brands want. Um, that being said, I mean, we, we get all types of requests from brands. I mean, our team's here. We get upwards of like 500 emails a day from brands wanting to do stuff. Um, and a lot of it is just education at this point. I think a, a lot of brands like you know see location-based services as hot, right? And we try and just tell them, you know, what's your goal, right? Mm -hmm. and let's try and help you get to that goal. Um, so you know, we, we we use this example internally all the time. We call it a mayonnaise dilemma. So we get like a lot of agencies and brands saying, hey, how can I get a badge for people? Um, this mayonnaise badge for people to check in at a Target, right? You say like that just doesn't make any sense, right? No one wants to unlock a mayonnaise badge when they check in at Target. But if they do, they, they might want to, but everything that we do, brand side, is a total opt-in relationship. So in order to unlock the Bravo badges, et cetera, you have to be following that brand on Foursquare. Um, and for CPG, it's the most difficult, right? Because we don't really know what that means yet. I think we're developing products that hopefully will launch sooner than later to allow for some of that. Right now, it's just all education, right? And we try and tell brands, like, it's no rush. You know, we'll still be around you know, for a little bit of time, raise some good money. Um, help us help you, right? Tell me what your goal is, and we're going to help find something to fit that goal, as opposed to kind of fitting a square peg into a round hole. Is that your expression? Yeah, I think you know one of the one of the the biggest. Uh, there's, if there's three big things that we're we're struggling with as a company. It's um it's dealing with the the you know the intake of, of business development requests because like they're all really good ideas. We're very protective of like the bad system and the game dynamics because. You know, we just don't want to. We don't want to flood users with with marketing stuff. Like we want to do just the just the right amount, and it's like it seems interesting. It's pushing users to do interesting stuff. We want to kind of preserve the like the integrity of the badges and kind of the game dynamics that we've created. And it's it's really tough to like 
you know, not not say no, but like hold on, we're still working to build to build like tools that will be able to help a lot of these brands. We're still like you know with thirty two people yeah. I think now, and uh, like we're racing as fast as we can to keep up with everything. And it's like it's I think it's like the hardest thing that we're that we're struggling with as a company. Yeah, and I thought it was a really important to have that Jimmy Choo fly because again we we did nothing. Right? Yeah. Just set up an account and you know there are opportunities to really figure it out in a really compelling way that can really drive to the goal that you want. And so a lot of stuff we're working on. What's that? No, we, d we didn't even we didn't know about it. <laughs> we had no I, idea. I, I emailed you and I'm like, what the heck? You tell me about these yeah, things. Yeah, I had no idea. Me. Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> and we love that stuff. No, I mean, again, you had to think of it as a platform. Like, you know, they just found a really unique way to leverage it. And it was like they would use yeah. Twitter, you know? Like, yeah. people have figured out how to use Twitter. And I think brands have struggled with this before. Um, you know, with Twitter, like, oh my God, what are we going to use it for? And then they find, you know, JetBlue finds their voice and Jimmy Choo finds their voice. And I think we're going through that, that growing stage of Foursquare. I, th I think our product is, you know, it's a lot different. It's like, it's interesting and complicated in different ways and brands are still trying to figure that out. The key to us is going to be building self-service tools, right? So right now, like, we're, a lot of this is just handled manually. We've got like four guys that are helping out and trying to keep up with the business development queue. Um, but if we can build tools, that just let you guys go in there and do whatever you want, kind of the same way Jimmy Choo did, but do, you know, almost have like a menu of things to choose from. Um, it, that's, that's the way, because I don't think we can, we can possibly keep up with it. So we want people just to be able to use the platform any way they see fit. And a lot of the stuff that we're working on, that's not, you know, Foursquare Four 2.0 and the new features, like all the stuff that's going on under the hood is to help people in this room you know, do the things they want to do on Foursquare. Uh, oh, this, one, this one's for me. Um, from an agency standpoint, what advice can you give to clients on how to best integrate Foursquare into marketing plans? Um, I would say I would say for that, um, what's what's interesting about that question is five ten years ago the options were so limited it was all right there's a print campaign that maybe drives people to a landing page and that's really all from a creative standpoint that was how we could push it maybe we would have some flash on the page and that would be about the extent of it now what's so amazing about that opportunity is there's the ability, there are all these new things. There are, we can run campaigns on Facebook that target people. There are ways that we can integrate Foursquare. And what's, what's, what's great about that is from, um, from a perspective of, uh, of, of an airline client that we have, for example, we could come up with things where you could have check-ins around, uh, if you check in a certain amount of times, maybe you could get um, to spend time in the lounge. Um, and using Advertising Week is a great example. Advertising Week, this is an event. We can still kind of using back to that EA example, we can still come up with different ways and different ideas to integrate Foursquare in ways that really make sense. They're not forced. They're really great ideas. And it, it from kind of a creative leadership and a thought leadership standpoint, gives us these fantastic opportunities to be able to just think bigger than we ever have before and using this, this really new concept in the last year or two of location-based social networking to kind of integrate with some of the more traditional things that people are used to. <laughs> uh, uh, what are your plans for online based businesses? E commerce type stuff? Sure. This comes up a bunch. Yeah. People want to, you know, people want to check in at TV shows, they want to check in to um, you know, reading an article online, people want to check into online stores. Um, you know, we've we've been struggling with this as well. You know, not struggling with it, it's like it's, it's like an internal debate that's constantly going on. And we're kind of, you know, we decided that we want to focus on things that occur in the real world. We want to drive people towards um, real world actions. And part of that's because, you know, we're, we're small as a team. Um, we have a lot on our plate and we know we can't cover everything. We want to go after, you know, the, our, kind of the, the core mission of Foursquare, which is get people out in the real world, get them to, you know, explore the world in their neighborhood in different ways. Um, so I, I, we, haven't, we haven't quite figured that out yet. Yeah. Do you have some thoughts? Uh, yeah. I think it makes a lot of sense for like, it, an e-commerce solution for folks that actually have physical locations, right? So we get a lot of requests from a lot of retailers in particular to leverage our add to Foursquare button, for instance. Um, you know, I go to you know, Gap.com for you know, lack of a better retailer. Um, and if I see a shirt that I like, maybe I add that to Foursquare and it defaults to you know, a, a certain local Gap location. Next time I go to Gap, it'll remind me to try that shirt or something like that. Right? That's a clever solution to tie the online offline. But I think as Dennis said, we always want to stick to our core DNA, like physical location, at least for now anyway. Did you just make that up? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. We should yeah. talk to about that. Should <laughs> someone write that down? <laughs> should have said yes. Um, so next question, do you folks see Facebook Places as a viable competitor? 
Uh, yeah, I think you know there's a ecosystem here where a lot of people are starting to play in the location space. We've got um, you know Twitter doing geotag tweets. We've got uh, Facebook starting to do um, you know what they're doing with places. Um, it's it's interesting. Like people people thought Twitter was going to come along. I'm sorry, Facebook was going to come along and, and kill Twitter. And I think really what it made is is it made the use case for for Twitter a lot stronger, and it made the um, you know thing that distinguishes Twitter from Facebook a lot um, a lot more clear to people. And I think you know we're kind of in that in that same boat where um, you know there's uh, there like what what we you know the DNA of Foursquare is it's just so different. It's all about like you know you've got a very a very uh, kind of unique social graph, and you're giving people like the opportunity to go out and explore the real world, right? I think Facebook is very good traditionally at trying to uh, you know help people share things online, and I think Foursquare was started specifically to really help people go and experience things offline. And you know, I just there's differences in DNAs of different companies, and I think that's one of the things that's really going to set us apart from them. Um, what we've seen so far is that um, you know, since they've entered the space, we've had some of our biggest growth numbers yet, and uh, we see a lot of our users. You know, they're driving a lot of attention to the space instead of we're driving a lot of users to kind of experiment with the Foursquare platform as well. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll say on that side. I mean, there's no question that they'll launch some kind of great ad products, right? But it, again, the way we think about it is what you can do on top of those generic products to influence behavior. Right, so we just launched like a badge API, partner API, uh, badge opportunity with Runkeeper that you know you'll get badges if you run like five miles. Right, what if that translated into you know buying products at your local grocery retailer? Right, like, yeah. how can we influence these actions in unique ways to drive unique behavior? There's some there's some special sauce within Foursquare, and it's it's somewhere in between you know the social utility, and it's somewhere in between the you know driving people to do things in the real world, and it's somewhere in between like you know with all the the badges and game mechanics that we've created. And you know, every time people check in, it's like pulling a, it's like pulling a slot machine. And like, you don't know what you're gonna get. You're gonna get a tip from a friend. You're gonna know that someone's nearby. You're gonna earn a badge. You're gonna get points. You're gonna become mayor. You're gonna find a special. And I don't know what it is specifically about Foursquare that makes people want to use it, but it's one of those elements. And um, you know, that's that's the core of what we do. And I think our product is always gonna be uh, distinct. And I think it's always gonna be a little bit more interesting than than anyone else in the space because of that. Um, 30 seconds. Yeah, we have 30 seconds that the <laughs> clock is ticking down. Um, so any, anything else you guys want to kind of add, add to it or any, any other kind of points? Uh, we want to work with you all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the most important thing is, you know, we, we do want to work with folks and we want to help kind of make your clients successful, whether it's, you know, with brands directly or with your clients, right? Um, we have products and we're open to helping educate. Yeah. Self-service stuff is in the works. Please stay tuned. <laughs> I mean, I think to kind of sum it up, whether you're a, a one-person merchant or you're the one of the largest retailers in the world, Foursquare's got a solution for you. Like I said, the people in this room are the, the best, biggest, smartest advertising and, and agency folks out there. So let's get creative and make some cool stuff with Foursquare.